Hello friends, this video on adolescence part 13 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. The next gland which we are going to talk about is the master gland that is pituitary gland. So till now we have spoken about three important endocrine glands that is the thyroid gland, uh, the pancreas that is the endocrine part of pancreas and the adrenal gland. So now we are going to talk about a gland who is the boss of all these glands. So this gland controls the secretion from all other glands. So where is this gland located? It is located in the brain just below hypothalamus. So hypothalamus is also uh, uh, an endocrine gland. So here you see the red colored structure which you see here that is hypothalamus. And just below this hypothalamus, you see a green colored structure that is pituitary. So if you look at the structure of pituitary gland, it is divided into two lobes. As you can see here, one and two. What are those two lobes? Those two lobes are adenohypophysis and neurohypophysis. So these are the two lobes into which pituitary gland has been divided. Now let us look at the functions of pituitary gland. Obviously if you talk about function of any endocrine gland, the function is that that particular gland is going to secrete some hormones and those hormones play some important role in the functioning of our body. So that is how the concept of endocrine system is. So here we will see what are the various function, what are the various hormones which are released by pituitary gland. So, so the major function of the pituitary gland lies in the fact that it acts as the master gland. It controls the function of all other glands. How it controls? It regulates the hormone secretion from other endocrine glands. So this gland will instruct other glands when to secrete their hormones. For example, we saw that adrenal gland, it secretes specific hormones like the corticoids, the adrenaline, they are secreted by adrenal glands. Again, the thyroid gland releases the thyroxine. Again, uh, testis releases testosterone. So different glands release different hormones. But when they have to release their hormones, that is controlled by the pituitary gland. Now how will pituitary gland send this signal that okay now you can secrete this hormone. So that is done by secreting some hormones. So pituitary gland will secrete some hormones and those hormones will actually regulate the hormone secretion from other glands. So one example is TSH. So TSH is thyroid stimulating hormone. So this hormone is released by pituitary gland and what is the function of this hormone? The purpose of thyroid stimulating hormone is to stimulate the thyroid gland to release the thyroid hormones. So here you have the pituitary gland, right? So pituitary gland will release thyroid stimulating hormone and this thyroid stimulating hormone will stimulate the thyroid gland to release the thyroid hormones like T3, T4, they are the thyroid hormones. So basically this hormone is used just to stimulate another gland so that it can release its hormones. So that is the function of pituitary gland. So here we will see what are the various hormones that pituitary gland releases. Now since pituitary gland controls a lot of other hormone, a lot of other glands, therefore many different hormones are released by pituitary gland and each of those hormones control the secretion of a hormone from another endocrine gland. So let us look at the various hormones. So as I said, the two lobes of pituitary, one is the anterior pituitary towards the front end, the other one is the posterior pituitary. So anterior pituitary releases some of these hormones like growth hormone, prolactin, thyroid stimulating hormone, adrenocorticotrophic hormone, luteinizing hormone, follicle stimulating hormone, melanocyte stimulating hormone. So these are the hormones which are released by anterior pituitary. Similarly, posterior part of pituitary also releases hormones like oxytocin and vasopressin. Now we are not going to talk about all of these hormones, but yes, most of these hormones we will discuss here. Because for example, thyroid stimulating hormone, we know what it does. It is going to control the thyroid gland to secrete the thyroid hormones. Similarly, adrenocorticotrophic hormone, from the name only you can 
understand adreno from adrenal cortico from cortex so it is going to tell the adrenal gland when to release their hormones right so that's how we will be able to understand what does each of them do so let us start with growth hormone the name speaks for itself growth hormone is the one which is responsible for overall growth of the body like all of us grow as we saw that during the first phase of our life that is the juvenile phase where i said that there is maximum growth we increase in height we increase in weight so that overall growth is possible due to growth hormone those changes also do not happen magically there is something inside in our body which is making us grow and that something is nothing but the growth hormone released by pituitary gland now if too much of secretion of growth hormone is there then overgrowth will happen so a person will become like a giant and that is called gigantism or gigantism that is a giant like appearance of a person similarly if very less growth hormone is secreted that will lead to dwarfism that is tiny human beings are called dwarfs so that is dwarfism so that is why growth hormone also need to be released in the right amount so you see here you here you can see an example of gigantism and here you can see the example of dwarfism and none of these are desirable the next hormone is the prolactin hormone lactin is always lacto the word lacto is related to milk so this hormone regulates the growth and development of mammary glands that is why after a baby is being born during the lactation period when the mother breastfeeds the baby that time the mammary glands secretes milk so this is due to the prolactin hormone in fact not the secretion of milk in fact the growth and development of the mammary gland all those things happen due to prolactin hormone so milk production in females during the lactation period next is thyroid stimulating hormone the name itself is self explanatory it regulates secretion from thyroid gland so it will control the thyroid gland and tell when to secrete the thyroid hormones like t3 t4 calcitonin etc so it synthesizes and secretion of thyroid hormones is controlled by thyroid stimulating hormone next is adrenocorticotrophic hormone this will regulate the secretion from adrenal gland that is why the name adrenocorticotrophic so we already know what do adrenal glands do so adrenal glands secrete a lot of uh, hormones like the adrenaline it also secretes the corticoids so the secretion of all these hormones is controlled by the adrenocorticotrophic hormone which is abbreviated as acth from pituitary gland synthesis and secretion of steroid hormones glucocorticoids etc next is the luteinizing hormone which is written as lh so this regulates the secretion from testis and ovaries now as we know testis secretes the testosterone ovaries secrete the estrogen now when to secrete the sex hormone that is being decided by luteinizing hormone so when the level of luteinizing hormone reaches a specific level then testis or ovaries get to know that okay it is time for them to release their sex hormones so they control the synthesis and secretion of androgens from testis in males androgens are nothing but one example of androgen is testosterone which is the male male sex hormone similarly in case of females it induces ovulation ovulation is nothing but release of egg from the ovary next is the follicle stimulating hormone this hormone stimulates the growth and development of ovarian follicles in females like inside the ovary you have many follicles like as i said there are many ova which exist inside the ovary now at the onset of puberty one of these ova mature and get released that is what is called ovulation now when ovulation has to take place that is controlled by the female sex hormones which in turn is controlled by the luteinizing hormone from pituitary gland now the development of the follicles the development of those structures inside the ovary that is controlled by the follicle stimulating hormone 
Now that we have discussed about so many different endocrine glands and their hormones, I think we have been able to understand that why should hormones be present in the right amounts? Because for most of them, we saw that if they are present in less quantity, that also creates a problem. If they are present in excess, again, that becomes a problem. Therefore, hormones if present in more or less than desired amount can be harmful. Let us look at the growth hormone. If it is present less, that is hypoactivity. Hypo is always less and hyper is always more. So it can cause dwarfism. If it is present in too much, then it can cause decantism. Similarly, if you talk about insulin, insulin is the hormone which reduces the blood sugar level. Now, if insulin is present in less amount, that means it will not lower the blood sugar level. So, in that case, the blood sugar level will increase. So, it will cause diabetes, which is also called diabetes mellitus. So, in fact, you talk about other hormones also, the thyroid hormone. When that hormone is not released in the right amount, that causes goiter. If it is released in excess amount, it causes hyperthyroidism. So all the hormones, if they are released in excess, that creates an harm to the body. Again, if it is released in less amount, that is also problematic. So I think with this discussion, you are clear about what are hormones, why are they released, how are they important for us. Thank you. Please visit www.examfear.com to watch more educational videos with a better experience. Please do not forget to like and subscribe to our YouTube channel for latest updates. Thank you once again.